Hey guys, it's Ifter, and I'm back with more Corpse Party. Last time was we were running back through the other endings. I ended on Yoshiki saving Ayumi when she's grabbed by the anatomical model in the science lab. Now that ended up with him getting hurt a little bit, and the anatomical model rushing him, which was actually a dead body I guess, while it was on fire. We're gonna see how that turned out. Mochida and Nakashima. What happened to you? You're covered in scratches. Kishinuma, he... So Yoshiki... Kishinuma... When he puts his mind to it, that idiot can really pull his weight. Only problem is, nobody can thank him for what he did anymore. God damn it! Come on, we'll go nuts if we just stand around here. We have to keep moving. Try not to let yourselves get too upset, though. I mean, of course you'll be upset, but... If you leave yourself too vulnerable, that'll be just the opening this place needs. The darkening will take you over, and you'll become part of the building. Like a stain. That's what Mr. Kabiki wrote, anyway. Oh, okay. So, let's keep looking for Miss Yui. As soon as we find her, we can get the hell out of here. Did they actually show me those closing up before? In the other endings? I don't think they did. Uh... She... Oh, she gave Naomi her student ID in this run. Wait. Or is this just like a collective inventory? Oh well. We never found a place to watch that tape! Interesting. Now, just a quick interruption. As you guys can see, I'm back to being Naomi and Satoshi. Once uh, Ayumi got to the... Well, uh, once, once Ayumi got to the incinerator room, or before she got there, after Miss Yui fell into the hole... Ah. Skip it through this. Once Ayumi... avoids falling into the hole with Miss Yui, she just, it unceremoniously just ends, and you're back to playing these two, or these three. So I'm gonna keep going, like I said, and I'll see you guys in just a moment. So, we're back again. Sachiko, we beg of you. Sachiko, we beg of you. Sachiko, hear our pleas. Sachiko, we beg of you. Sachiko, we beg of you. So, yes, you saw that right. I had to go through everything again just to get here. Wait, before you all go... Hmm? Don't stay home tomorrow. Come to school, please. Okay. And that's probably it. Oh, I couldn't sleep that night. My thoughts kept drifting back to Yoshiki. And not just him, but Miss Yui and the others too. I'd never see any of them again. They were all just gone. Forever. I'd taken those carefree days we used to spend together for granted. And never realized how much they meant to me until it was too late. The night passed uncomfortably and the next morning there was... An incident involving Ayumi. She walked into the bathroom to wash her face. Just like any other morning, but when she saw her reflection in the mirror, she froze in place. There on her neck was a large and clearly visible bruise shaped very much like a pair of hands. She began scrubbing her neck furiously, trying desperately to wash it away. But all this did was make it darker and more apparent. With every pass of the towel, it's like the bruise somehow became a little more recent. This didn't stop her, though, and as she kept scrubbing, the bruise turned jet black. It absolutely looked like someone had strangled her. She screamed, frantically clawing at her neck like a madwoman, hoping in vain this was all some sort of mistake. She was clawing so hard that her skin was peeling and bleeding profusely, and yet, even under the skin, the bruise was still there. 
Now firmly in a panic, she tried slathering the towel with soap and deeply rubbing it into her raw, bloody neck. Almost as if reacting to this, the entire area began to pulse it with a burning, suffocating heat. <laughs> Amy still wouldn't stop rubbing the bloody, frothy towel against her skin, however, even with her body itself objecting to the act. The white block of soap had turned to deep crimson and her consciousness was fading fast. Everything felt distant and unreal, but just as she was on the verge of blacking out, she heard a voice call out to her, clear as day. And she recognized it immediately. I bet it was Yoshiki! Okay! Guess what I'm about to try and do? Let's find out what happens if you try to leave the room as Yoshiki! I'm not liking this. Now this time, Yoshiki's here to greet us. Let's see what he has to say. Where's Shinazaki? So it was some kind of monster? But how? That, that shouldn't... It's my fault. Yoshiki, I left her to die. I'm gonna have to live with that for the rest of my life. It's the monster's fault she died, not yours. You did nothing wrong, Kishinuma. Come on. Let's make sure nobody else dies. Let's find Miss Yuin and get the hell out of here. Yeah, I swore to her that I would live through this for the both of us. I just don't get it, though. She's such a scaredy cat, and yet she told me to run. She said, don't worry about me, just run. I mean, she had to have been scared shitless, scared out of her mind, and yet she just accepted it. If she were still alive, she'd die again in a second if it meant keeping you guys safe. That's all she was ever worried about. So I guess the duty falls on me now. But I swear I won't let her down. I'll stake my life on it. It wasn't just us she was looking after, Kishinuma. It was everyone from class, you included. That's right. And not a single other person is going to die if I have anything to say about it. So let's find Miss Yui and put this place behind us for good. Make sure you keep it together. Okay? If you leave yourself too vulnerable, this place will swallow you up. Darkening will take you over and you'll become part of the building like a stain. As of that Kabiki guy wrote, anyway. Understood. So, something I didn't do in the other route, where Ayumi was the one that lived from the science lab. What happens if I go back in? Oh! Shinazaki. That's what happens. I assume the other one would be a burnt corpse of uh, Yoshiki if you went that route. So anyway, that's cool. That's cool. Alright. Whoa. So this is different if you're playing Yoshiki in the science lab route. Miss Yui. Miss Yui. God, she's unconscious. Miss Yui, pull yourself together. Come on, wake up! Suck. Don't tell me. No, she's ice cold. <laughs> Gotta be kidding me! Miss Yui, please, no! You got yourself in pretty deep, huh, Miss Yui? Looks like you're Shinazaki's partner in crime once more. One last time. But you... You can't hear a word I'm saying anymore, can you? Miss Yui... And like before, I lose access to her. Or to them. So let me... do this whole... Uh, what is this place? And what happened to me? I was in the incinerator and... Ugh! The hell is this place? It's nasty! Where am I? So this is- it says he's- this is what's weird to me. Never noticed that before. It says he's still with Ayumi. That is not accurate. Yosuke. Yoshiki. Atoshi. Satoshi and Yuka too! Good to see you guys! Uh-huh. <laughs> Naomi went after this monster that took Shinhara's body and she got separated from us. And then... Miss Yui too. Alright, now there's nothing keeping us in this godforsaken school anymore. Let's just find Nakashima and get the hell out of here. Yeah, 
Sounds like a plan to me. And right on cue. So, mostly just the same. Yeah, that's all the same. But with Naomi not there to do the rope, or the strangling thing, let's see. Don't stay home, come to school, please. And Yoshiki just walks off. Well, I guess that happened before, too. Hmm. Let's see what happens with Yoshiki. This can't be good. I return to my room and collapse into my bed. Thinking about all the things that were going to happen from here on out, what life would be like, when I heard a faint voice softly calling my name. Satoshi! What the? It was coming from outside the window. I got it to look, and there in the distance, I saw a person dressed in white waving at me. Is that? It was Yoshiki, but he wasn't quite himself. His eyes were opened unusually wide, and he was staring at my window with soulless black pupils. On top of that, he was flashing me a bizarre, toothy grin with a decidedly unnatural curve to it. I could see saliva pouring out from between each of his teeth. Even the wave of his hand was off. It was vigorous and forceful, as if he were overacting a part. Satoshi! Come on out! Come on out! What the hell is he doing? At this point, I didn't care. I darted out of the house to meet him, still wearing my school uniform. Yoshiki, what are you doing? If you... If you weren't there, then Shinazaki... Shinazaki would... He came rushing towards me at full speed, holding something in his hand that glinted in the light. It doesn't matter. Right's always right. He stopped himself mid-charge, throwing the knife he held in his hand to the ground with a dull metallic clank. You weren't... Yoshiki, what's going on? Don't worry. I wasn't going to stab you. I was actually planning to stab myself. What the hell are you swear- are you saying? Didn't you swear to Shinazaki that you'd live through this? I don't deserve to. I don't deserve anything. I'm a worthless piece of shit for abandoning her, for running when I should have stayed and fought. Well, how's dying going to help anything? You killing yourself sure as hell is going to bring Shinazaki back. Plus, do you really think that's what she would want, huh? Shinazaki... I stood there in the rain for, I don't even know how long, just staring at Yoshiki as he knelt there, crying. Soon, I began crying right alongside him. So, no one... No one dies in that end. Extra, anyway. Still, Yoshiki's obviously pretty messed up for life after that. Who can blame him? I sure can't. But what I can blame him for, is making me go back in. He complained about having to go back once. I have to keep doing it. Now, I did some hunting around and I think I finally figured out where the... I, well, I thought about it rather, not hunted. Um, I think I know where the... yeah. There's the fifth note. I somehow completely forgot about this room. It wasn't even in my head. Naho's notes 5 out of 5. These papers. Just looking at them makes my head throb. It's like they're somehow filled with emotion. Like Naho's feelings have been projected onto them. Naho. Huh? What, what's it say? What, what's it say? What the hell does any of that mean? What? Oh, by the way, Yoshiki and Ayumi are alive in this run through the science lab. That might be important to mention. Uh... I don't know what that accomplished, so I'm gonna try and meet up with... Satoshi and the others. 
see you guys then. One, two souls, one painted red, one painted green. Closet trespassers will be expelled. Oh, maybe I get that now. So this door is open now. Naho. Well, if it isn't Ayumi Shinazaki, how you holding up? Naho, I'd like to share with you some information I've gathered. You have my attention. What'd you find? So, Sachiko was the perpetrator. I had no idea. Very interesting indeed. Thank you for providing me with this valuable data. However, you've only solved half the mystery. You have yet to determine who exactly Sachiko is. There's still a lot of ground left to cover before we've learned all there is to know about this school. You're damn right. At any rate, there's someone I need to find. If you'll excuse me, please. I'm not done talking to you yet. But I've lost interest in what you have to say. Who was that boy in the staff room, I wonder? Was he a classmate of yours? A brother, perhaps? There's a bond of love between you. It's what keeps you going. I would enjoy it so if more people like that came around for me to watch. It's quite entertaining. Naho, I'm disappointed in you. Now, why would that be? Weren't you a veritable fangirl of mine? It's because of this! What is this Sachiko and the Ever After crap? And what are the ruins of the Shinazaki estate? Proper observance and reversal procedure for Sachiko and Shinazaki curse. Sachiko and the Ever After. Procedure for proper observance. The spell trigger is the phase. Sachiko, we beg of you. Must be chanted once for each participant, then one additional time for Sachiko. Following this, the proxy doll is to be torn apart. Did the proxy doll recover from the Shinazai yet? The printed facsimile will suffice. If everything is performed as indicated, the spirit will pass by harmlessly and nothing of note should occur. If part of this ritual is performed incorrectly, Sachiko herself will descend upon any viable spirit medium in the vicinity, and all present will be afflicted with her curse and spirited away to the sacred ground. If you've angered her, you may atone by doing it reverse. Produce your remnant of the proxy doll. You intentionally put the wrong directions on your blog. You wanted the ritual to fail. Did you do it for him, your beloved? Your mentor, Mr. Kabiki, were you trying to make sure he had a large sample size to study for his article? What the hell is so funny? You think you're so smart, huh? Well, you're not, so go fish! Go fish? What the hell does that mean? She's saying it's a lie. Anyone who takes stuff posted on the net and swallows it wholesale is a fucking dumbass. A total retard. You're shaking. You can't tell me you didn't have the slightest inkling that it never crossed your mind something like this might happen. How many people did your little whim send to a slow, painful death, huh? You're the one who spread Sachika's curse across the entire country. You! Don't you think I know that? But Kabiki, my dear Kabiki, smiles at me when I do right by him. Oh, Kabiki, my sweet succulent mentor, I would do anything for you. Anything at all. But you occult freaks, you can all go rot in a corner for all I care. You're a horrible person. Horrible, horrible, horrible. God, how could you? It's my duty to protect my dear mentor's job, and I won't let anyone get in my way. Naho, you died here. And, do you remember what you were thinking when you died, what you were looking at? I don't, actually. That's the one moment I just can't recall. In fact, no matter how much I try, it won't come to me. Your selfish egotism cost you the person you loved most. What? You really don't remember, do you? Your very last actions as a human being, after you lost all hope, but before you died. You weren't swallowed up by the school, probably because of your abilities, but you did succumb to the darkening. Oh, <laughs> 
Do you get it now? You killed him. You killed the man you love. You killed Mr. Kabiki. You took his life with your own bare hands. That wasn't expected. That wasn't expected at all. Give me a break. Is this some kind of horror movie or something? You okay? Acquired baby statue. Naho Sonoki's name tag. Books are in remarkably good condition. She was up here looking for something. The wisdom of heart care counselors and the genealogy of scholarly studies. Okay. So there's a whole bunch of stuff in here. What's this? Nothing. So that was wonderful. But... Wow. I'm fresh out of time. Man, that was... Satisfying and depressing all at the same time. So... Next time, we will see what happens now that we have both baby dolls. I'm actually really excited. So, I'll... As I say that, I don't sound excited. I am excited. So, um, next time, we'll figure out what those baby dolls open up in that area with Satoshi and Naomi and Yuka. So, until then, guys, take care. Thanks for watching, everyone. If you liked this video, please click the like button down below. And if you want to see more of these videos, I'd really appreciate you clicking that subscribe button. I upload every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So if you want to see more videos, check them. I also have a Twitter if you'd like to follow me there. And a Twitch, and my Steam is also located down below. Share me with friends and family if you guys can. I'd really appreciate it. I hope to see you all for the next video. See you then.